Hola and welcome to episode three of Word to Your Mama. Today I have a really good friend, someone's definitely part of my tribe. I've known him since college timers. We're talking 90s kids, 90s. He's been a huge part of of my like an integral part of my music industry history because there's been a couple of places he kept asking me and then finally I went up to to House of Blues concerts and then he asked me and I moved over with him to AEG and because of all that I got to meet so many people that have now become part of my family part of my my bigger tribe in an industry that you know maybe doesn't have the best people all the time or it shows a lot of people's asses so he's one of the nicest guys ever, but especially one of the nicest guys in uh, that has been in the music industry for so long. Uh, hasn't changed him. He's like super patient, super nice. Um, he loves music. Uh, he's done everything from being DJ to artist management, concert marketing. And currently his position is VP uh, Partnerships Activation for the Global Partnerships Division of AG Presents. But he loves to give back in whatever way he can. If he can mix his love of music with giving back, then that's a win-win all around. And what he's done in the past and what he wants to continue to do, um, he's done. He's helped to curate three of the Operation USA disaster relief concerts um, to raise funds for earthquakes in Haiti and Japan. So he's always looking for those types of opportunities where he can uh, mix uh, both of his loves. So without further ado, let's do this. Eric Kohler. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Me, 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 Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. A little, little water here. Oh, my goodness. Did you have your drink? Um, I just had some red wine because uh, uh, Kelly's mom made some pasta sauce some pasta uh and some gluten-free pasta new mm -hmm. or some noodles so yeah i just nice. had a little red wine i didn't overdo it okay all right i took well, a little i want to be slushy you <laughs> slushy slippery um <laughs> eric kohler thank you for being here thanks it's easy see me. see that's just thanks just, for having me <laughs> you slide in i slide in easy you do smooth <laughs> Um, I was gonna, I was gonna call you a nickname, but I, I, maybe it's not appropriate. So just, just Kohler. I call you Kohler. Your name is Eric Kohler, but I call you Kohler. And you know, yeah. I was thinking when I was prepping for this episode, I was like, how the fuck did we meet? We met in college, Long Beach State, Cal CSULB. Yes. Cal State Long Beach, CSULB. Um, we met at K Beach, KBCH Radio, the campus radio station. Okay, where, here's the story. Uh, here's the story. My, <laughs> where my buddy Sean and I, uh, he and I were the program director and general manager. I can't remember who was who, and he, I don't think he can remember either. Uh, and I, I had a show called Feeling the Vibes. The feeling. Please, let, please make sure that people understand it's. How did you spell it's, the? It's, it's F F E E L I N. Apostrophe, and then <laughs> da, d a, and then v i b z. Oh, but oh, even that I forgot oh, about yeah, that yeah. vibes. Yeah, and it was uh, it was all reggae and ska, and uh, I, I had reggae nucleus magazine at the time as well. But that's that, that's another story. And so, um, so Sean and I were putting out feelers to see uh, what other potential uh, quality DJs were on campus. <laughs> and uh, and I think that you uh, applied with 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 a friend of yours, right? Yeah, I can't Mikomi. remember her name. Mikomi. Yes, that's right. Yeah, very very sweet. And so um, you didn't make the cut. I don't think. <laughs> so, right? No, no, I made the cut, fool. Don't you always change the story? You I, always I change know, the I, story. I, don't know I thought that you didn't. Um, oh, you know what? There was a little delay. There was a delay because of NASA. Because it was one yes. of those community, it was a, it was a, it was a mm -hmm. um, radio station that was not on the radio. It was on the local cable access channels where you would, you would see like community events like scrolling up and down mm -hmm. the street. And then uh, we were always quality kids. Good. <laughs> quality. <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> we're talking circa ninety four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top yeah, top shelf. Like 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were preempted by NASA. So maybe that's why you didn't get on right away. That's why I didn't get on, but I made it. Cause I, so that's how I met you, because I we applied to the show. We wanted to be on the show. I couldn't remember. But uh, you, always so. tell the, you always tell the story that, you know, we, 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 we had a show, and then you said we couldn't go on the air and all this stuff like that. But that makes, that makes for a better story. <laughs> and I'm getting but it older, was NASA. my memory's slipping a but little bit. <laughs> they were going to do something. So, yeah. And then, and then it was you had a hip hop show, right? Yeah, it was Mikomi and Marissa's Hip Hop Hour. That's Ooh. yeah, yeah. Powerful. And uh, it, we, I think we somewhere, somewhere out there, we have a tape. Remember, we had to like do a practice yeah. tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I an audition know. or something. Who yeah, has I'm that? Not sure. I'm that? not sure if I ever listened to it, to be honest. But oh, no. thanks. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, no, that was that was fun, and you, you know that was actually, I mean, you and I both went on to do a little bit of radio, right, in, in different in different manners. Yeah, but for sure. That was, that's where it started. Sean did a bunch of radio, so. Yeah, so that's how we met. That was the origin yeah. story of how we met at um, Long Beach State, and then yeah. radio. So we 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 had that in common, right? Yeah. And then we just I don't know became friendly, I guess, right? Aaron yeah. and I, my rib and I would see you at the gym, at the mid, you and Sean. Yes. We'd oh, make we fun would. of the, the the very low weight amounts <laughs> that you guys were trying to press. Um, so that was fun. And then we just became really, yeah. really close. And I think it was like after we had graduated, right? You were gonna get yeah. married and then you didn't. That's correct. And then, but we, but I think we, I mean, we stayed in, we must have stayed in touch, right? Kind of continuous. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe it, give or it take. It kind of stopped you know, for a little bit. Off. And then, and then, then when we reconnected and stuff. And then if it wasn't for this man, I, I was on my way to be in the music industry. But I think the trajectory of where I ended up was because of you, Kohler. Because yeah. I was a Hits magazine. And they're like, yeah. hey, why don't you come over and work at um, House of Blues concerts? Right. At the so, Universal so, Amphitheater. Yeah, right. Yep. On the back lot there, Universal Amphitheater, House of Blues concerts. Yeah. yeah. So that was, when was that? The early, early 2000s. I started, uh, Aaliyah died. And, and Aaliyah died. And then I started, but then I couldn't go to the office because 9 11. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so fall of 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because we weren't we weren't in those offices for too long before we moved over to the uh, to the to the tower, right? To uh, yeah. Sunset. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And and be and then because of that, that's where I met people so that people. we we still we called like family now that yeah. in, are in this horrific could could be, and we've seen the different sides of this horrific business, music industry. Yeah. And then when you left, what year did you go to AEG? From from House of Blues. Uh, mid mid two thousand three. Two thousand three. So you boned yeah. out, and then you're like, "Hey, come on over here." Why don't you come on over? <laughs> I, I need I need I need my people. Uh, and then I went over there. Yeah, because that was that was pretty pretty soon after, right? Yeah, I went like in two thousand five because I was I was only there for a year. So you were gone for a little bit, and then I left. Because I was there from 2005, and I was only there a year, and then that's when I left to right. go on my own. But, but um, yeah. So then you went. So from there, so first you had a radio show talking about speak. Let's go back to radio. You had a radio okay. show on K Jazz. Yes. So, um, uh, so when Sean, who I'd mentioned earlier, he was, I think he was like station manager. Or so at at KKJZ, or at the, originally it was KLN. Where I oh, worked yes, part time. Yeah. I worked part time when I was going to Cal State Long Beach, and then it became K Jazz or KKJZ. And so, in actually in two thousand one, I think it's sometime in two thousand one, the station was looking to expand their audience, kind of um, do some new specialty shows. So uh, on Friday nights, I did a show called the Havana Kingston Connection. Oh, see, see, I was, see. I was, uh, you know, I'd been a big fan of. of Jamaican influenced music, and really thanks to one uh, of a social club and and mm. and my old business partner for Reagan Nucleus, Ireno, who, who was who's Cuban, 
I started um, really becoming a fan of Cuban music and 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 and, and Latin jazz and and a lot of those types of rhythms. And so um, Sean helped me come up with the name uh, Havana Kingston Connection, where I played music from and inspired by Cuba and Jamaica. And so that that lasted. I did that every Friday night from 2001 until 2005. And oh, and sure. over those over those years, I probably only missed maybe a maybe a dozen shows at most. Like I was, and then who would fill in for you, Sean or or uh, Junior? No, no, um, Joey Altruda, who's oh, Joey a, Altruda. one of my favorite um, musicians from the from the ska scene in L.A. He now lives up in Oregon. He filled in a few times. Miles Perlick, who was a DJ, also at the time on K Jazz. And then I pre-recorded a few times, so oh, I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, but I came on right after Jose Riso's uh, jazz on the Latin side, so I, I love. It was such a great experience, and you know, it was a labor of love. But and then I and then I would fill in for Junior Francis on his um, KXLU show, KXLU, uh, yes, Loyola Marymount University, and so. Um, but but again, you know, through through the magazine, through college through working at universal amphitheater i mean so many of the now aeg i mean so many friends and and, and really you know family the chosen family chosen family for sure Let, let's go back to a uh, reggae nucleus i mean i i think if you were part of southern california but especially la and you were into reggae music you knew what the hell reggae nucleus was <laughs> it was yeah, important you know, yeah um uh, Irene and I created that and started in in '94 because we were both fans of of, of reggae and ska music and and uh, wanted you know, but there wasn't really a one stop shop to find out about where to go to see the music live. You know, whether it was a bar or a club, you know, wasn't a place to go to see or, or to find where you can go buy the music. You know, whether it was uh, you know, a clothing shop or a record store that specialized in, in the music. It wasn't a place to go eat, you know, Jamaican and Caribbean uh, food uh, or any radio stations. And so we kind of model, modeled it a little bit after like the LA Weekly, where we just listed everything in, in, the, in the back of the, of, of the magazine and we built the articles around it. And so, you know, we had, we had different writers from my brother, Jason, to, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> to Reggae Russ, Russell and, Ernesto and, and and Junior was a big part of it and 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 uh, Rude Gal and and then we had um, uh, the McTaggart family really contributed and, and then some amazing photography by by the uh, Bob Salzman who, who passed uh, several years ago and um, but you know I had the opportunity to interview so many legends and up and coming artists and 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 uh, met a lot of the um, people from the scene too where you know i wouldn't have guessed it at the time but fast forward a few years and and you know on one hand junior and i started um you know helping assemble some backing bands for some of these jamaican legends you know whether it was uh eric monte morris or Derek morgan or phyllis dylan and or rico rodriguez some of these you know icons of, of jamaican music um uh you know and helping promote some of those shows and then and then, um, uh, you know, separately, a little bit after that, you know, Sean and I started managing the Agrilites, which yeah. were some of the musicians that, that backed up some of those legends. And so, you know, it's uh, it's it's funny how funny how, uh, you know, the world works. Yeah, I think it's I think it's awesome that you know I met you because we had this love of music, and you you know yeah. we had you had a radio show and. We both entered the music industry in our own way, but then because of you, we reconnected working together again. You know, in the at the same company at at uh, House of Blues concerts, and then at AEG. Mm -hmm. And it seems like no matter what you, if people don't understand, this industry will eat you up and spit you the fuck out. <laughs> it right. can, right? And yeah. you are like. You are one of the nicest people I I know. Like uh, I think I've maybe thanks. one time seen you get kind of upset. Like, <laughs> like, but not at you. Not at you. Not at no, never. <laughs> and it's just like you know, you're just so calm, cool, and collected. And I feel like I would be worried that you know this this what this industry could do to you. But 
you've managed to continue to just stay super fucking positive and always continue to find that outlet stay within the music like because it it could burn you out where just like fuck this shit you know yeah and i feel like you've always you've always i mean you've been so so let's go back you were when you went to aeg you were a what marketing director touring was that what it was? Uh, I did. I did like regional marketing. Yep, for regional for marketing conference throughout. Yeah, like the the SoCal, so to speak. Yeah, and, and then, then I you went l- to, then I went on to do tour marketing. And then you did tour marketing, and then boom, you left and you went to Azov. I left. Yep, I left. Um, you know, I had been doing between Universal Amphitheater slash House of Blues concerts and then AG. I'd been doing marketing for about thirteen or so years, and my wife Kelly, who I met through the business. Um, she was in music management. She was actually working over at Azov. And so there was an opportunity over there. Um, they called me. And at the time, I was, uh, Sean and I were managing the Agri-Lights. And so I, I thought to myself, you know, A, it's not every day that, that you get an offer to go work at, you know, such a, you know, a prestigious management company. And, and uh, it was part of the frontline management group. And, um, you know, I thought maybe I wanted to, do artist management full time, so I thought it would be great experience over there, working with all the different management companies, and um, and Kelly and I could also commute, and it would either make or break our relationship. <laughs> right? Working in the same uh, in the same building, um, and and clearly it's it it, uh, it didn't break it. Um, and so yes, yeah, so I was over there, kind of on the music services side. So you know, which which was really my first official you know, kind of gig on the sponsorship side of things. Mm. And so, um, so I was over there all in all five and a half years. Yeah. So I I got, got a lot of experience, um, you know, on, on, on the, on the management side, working with a few different brands over there. Um, yeah. Until, until mid 14, when I made the jump back to AG. Back to AG. And now you're What's your official title? Sponsorship activation? Uh, uh, partnership? Vice President Partnership Activation for uh, AG Global Partnerships. Oh, excuse. Excuse. <laughs> yes. I mean, so you've been all around. You've been like in all these different areas, whether it's professionally or what you were doing on the side. So I wanted to know, how did you st- stay, maintain your positivity but and your love of music? Yeah. You know, um, uh, not always easy. However, I, I've, uh, you know, I, I couldn't play music if my life depended on it. Like I'm not musically inclined. That's it's not always yeah. been behind the scenes, right? Um, but I just, you know, I, I uh, when I when I worked part time at KLON Radio, I, uh, you know, which was which was on the campus of Cal State Long Beach, now KJazz, I um, I would answer phones, and up until that point, I, I would answer phones sometimes in addition to work in the in the um, in the membership department. And so people would call in and want to know like, who was that song that, 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 you know, DJ Chuck Niles played at this certain time. And, you know, and I'd go into the music, st- into the library, I'd grab the album. Oh, I look at the call logs and I'd go into the, into the um, library, grab the, the album or CD, you know, and I would come back to the phone and, and tell the, the caller, you know, Oh, it was, you know, it was Miles Davis, you know, and this was the song and this was the album. And they'd want to know, you know, well, what, you know who are all the players, and and it really mm. became a lot about the musicianship. And up until that point, most of what I knew about music um, was more the the more mainstream. I'm a, you know throughout the '80s, I was a big new wave fan, and <laughs> and um, uh, you know early '90s, I was I was definitely getting into, into into a lot of reggae. But it really became more about the musicianship side of things. Yeah. And so and so um, through that, through the magazine, through through working, you know, at Universal Amphitheater when I started there in, in, in uh, mid '96, I and, and just to see live music, and, and and then doing the marketing and seeing it from, you know, putting the show on sale and doing the marketing, and then and then you know fast forward and I had to escort media to you know to the to the pit to take photos or, or you know capture video and work with the radio stations on site, but but just to see when the artist, you know, starts performing and, and, and there, there's nothing, there's nothing like live music. And, yeah. and so, you know, I just, 
I maybe I mean sure this you know our our business and our industry you know uh, definitely uh, you know you can become jaded pretty easily or, yeah. or, or, or discouraged about things but you know I've I don't know I've always just been such a huge fan and just love music and and live music and just you know helping helping curate and, and create that experience. Staying competitive in these dynamic times means having the right technology at work for your small or medium-sized business. Whether your goal is to grow, downsize, or modernize, Panoply BPO provides the right combination of tools, support, and affordability necessary to make it a reality. Visit panoplybpo.com. That's P-A-N-O-P-L-Y B-P-O dot com to schedule your no obligation consultation today. Mention WTYM and get your 13th month of service for free. Panoplybpo.com. There is a better way. Okay. So it's it's never it's never been has there ever been a time where you've been like, uh yeah, no. It's it's just ruin it for me. You mean just in general? Like like yeah. like like I don't want to be in the music business anymore? Yeah. Or or, uh, or you because you maybe you saw it was affecting how you maybe weren't as interested in seeing live music or doing your shows or doing the side yeah. all the different side things that you do. Um no, surprisingly not. Um, maybe it's because my 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 passions and my and my my love and you know labor of love, right, um, has always been a little bit different than than maybe what I'm doing, you know, a nine to five, mm. so to speak. Um, and maybe that's maybe that's a good balance, right? Yeah. I mean, um, totally. I think if I was, <coughs> excuse me, if I was. Um, Maybe if it was all the same, you know, specific genres or so, maybe it would, maybe it would, uh, maybe it would drive me a little crazy. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe the yeah. diversity is, is is healthy. Yeah, no, for sure. That's it's. I could see that. It's like a balance because you're yeah. dealing with, uh, reggae, ska, all these different kind of sub genres, well, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So right. that makes sense. Um. Yeah, so one of the, the people, the reason why I have different people on the show is because they're part of my tribe, whether they know it or not. You know, you're part of my tribe uh, so much yeah. so that our fir your firstborn, our firstborn, my only born, I mean, you're, you know, Kelly, shout out to Kelly. I'll have her on here yeah. as well. Uh, we went to labor the same day. <laughs> I know. That's so, which is crazy. crazy. I know. And so our oldest, yeah. the supernatural bear, and your do oldest yeah. daughter yeah. are one day. Fiona, one day apart. It's crazy. I know. It's crazy. It was meant to be. It, yeah, for sure. It's connected for always. But so let's just talk about you, what you've done for me. I've already said thank you and all these different things. And because I have this amazing family, you included. But I mean, we have similar friends, a lot of similar friends that we 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 hang out or we have all these yeah. memories. And we've all gone, which is funny if you think about it. A lot of us have gone from house of blues over to ag <laughs> yeah 100 percent. you know yeah. and then back and forth like a lot of people don't understand how incestuous this industry is and it's like a lot of back and forth and stuff like that um but i mean they're all quality people they're all great people <laughs> yeah and it, it's it's uh it's interesting to me just i feel like a common co a common thing we all have is that we love music so much like it fuels us, it saves us for whatever reason. Um, and, but besides that, I wanted to find out you were born and raised in Downey, right? Yes. Born and raised in Downey, California. Downey, California. And home, I wanted to see. Home of, home of the Blasters and the Carpenters. Ooh, the Carpenters. I didn't know that the Carpenters. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, here we, we nothing's off limits unless someone tells me and i wanted to see something that i feel a lot of people can relate especially because we are of a certain age bracket if you will mm -hmm. um where I we're have a few, I have a few years on you <laughs> no you have like what one not even um <laughs> so you know about 
our, our, our parents getting to a certain age and that shift, that change of having to take care of them, um, their, their health, and um, also passing away. And I've always yeah. felt like, in a way, I was lucky because my mom died like over 25 years ago. So I went through all that shit before. But I, I think about it now and I'm like, fuck, like all my friends have to go through the shit now. And I don't want them to have to, but I know that they have to. Yeah. So I know that, you know, your father passed away how many years ago now? Uh, about three and a half. Three and a half years. So I was wondering if, if there was any, now that that time has passed, if there's any insight that maybe you could share with us because of what did he, what did he have and what did he pass away of? Yeah. So, um, so we noticed maybe, <clears throat> uh, we noticed several years before he passed that he was starting to, um, we noticed signs of like dementia, you know, mm. him forgetting things and, um, you know, but it wasn't early onset. I mean, he, he was, he was already late, late seventies, I, I would say. Um, but, uh, but he, he, yeah, he ended up passing of, um, what became both Alzheimer's and, um, Parkinson's. Mm. So, so, you know, his, his mind was, you know, was, was, um, just, he was in a pretty bad space in, in, in that, in that sense. Parkinson's was not until the last, uh, I would say a year or so that it became really bad. And then he fell, broke his hip, ended oh. up having hip surgery and and oftentimes what happens there with you know people that are on the older side that you know that's kind of the the, the start of the spiral spiraling down and so he he passed uh, about five months after after he he broke his hip um but i mean you know that was uh, my parents had already moved up to santa maria so unfortunately you know in the last few years of his life i I couldn't be there as much as say my sister who was who was really uh, close by and and, and mm -hmm. it was just amazing of how much you know she and my mom were able to help take care of my dad and and um, uh, you know so I'll forever be thankful for you know for my sister Jennifer and and you know my brother and I would get up there as much as we can to you know and help in other ways but yeah I mean it's it's tough to see your you know your parents go through that and just to get old but especially when um, you know, they, they, there's certain things that they can't control. I mean, he, he would, he would not, he wouldn't rem be able to remember what he had for breakfast, mm -hmm. but he could, but he was able to remember things about his childhood. Oh, so wow. it's, so it's crazy how the mind works in that sense. Um, and, um, but my, but my mom, you know, my mom's still up in Santa Maria and still holding, you know, holding on and, you know, and is in relatively good health up there. But oh, that's good. I love yeah, that. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, I, I, yeah, I wish, you know, I was, I wish I had been closer to him as far as physically closer. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, we were, we were close to that family, you know, growing up and, and have, you know, nothing but, you know, uh, really, really fond and great childhood <laughs> memories. And, you know, probably, probably a, your, your, your typical, you know, suburban family, I guess, in, in certain ways. <laughs> So one of the things, thank you so much again for, for sharing that. I just know that, you know, there's a lot of people that are going through that and maybe that they think yeah. that they're by, they're alone in, in going through this. And I feel like um, there's more people that have are, had this experience, have had this experience yeah. um, that then they know and that, you know, um, they're not alone and that, uh, you know, there's it's a lot good. of different resources out there, especially right now online. Um, I feel like a lot of my friends in the past couple of years have had to deal with um, d their uh, parents having deteriorating health and yeah. being a kid. That's a, a, a whether you, you know, because you were further away, you couldn't be there. But like I've had a couple of friends that they happen to be the primary caregiver and all the extra thing that that entails uh, on top so of. Tough dealing with it i mean there's so, mad levels like so oh. many fucking levels yeah. so you know I, I always try to say like try to get some type of help or to have someone to talk to make sure you have a good support group because it's 100 it's fucking it's fucking you know draining i mean i went through it so when i was so young and now it was i mean 
it, it's crazy. Like, and then I don't yeah. I don't think at any age you're prepared to deal with it, regardless of what type of relationship you have with the specific parent and stuff. So yeah. I think it's I, I think it's very important to to always try to share, and especially you being a man. You know what I'm saying? I think that's also important to to share that this experience and and be like, yeah, it was tough, and you know this and that, all oh, these different things. Um, I think that's shit. super important right now. Um, so I wanted to ask you before we wrap it on up. Um, I wanted to ask you some rapid fire questions, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. <laughs> So just just to know, people out there know that he has no idea what these questions are. <laughs> I didn't email them or text them to him. Um, and then, you know, of course, I know he's born in Downey, but I was just trying to, you know, be interviewing shit. Okay, so here we go. So rapid fire questions. Okay. What are three words to describe yourself? They have to be three words? Mm-hmm. Like, like it can't be. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would say um, mellow. Please believe it. I would say uh, loyal. Oh, please believe it. And um, family. Uh, uh, if I if I say like family you say or family you man could, or, or, yeah, or family <laughs> man, yeah. <laughs> Did I cheat there on the end? <laughs> yeah, you can. Okay, nice. I think I think you have a, a good sense of yourself because those are all super true, super on point. What about what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, that's another good one. You know, <laughs> I would say uh, th- there's a few, but I, I would I would I want to share the and this is you've heard, but like live live in the moment, like. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you can't change the past, right? You can't, you can't necessarily predict the future, and 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 just make the most because, right? I mean, tomorrow is not guaranteed, and so, and and yeah. I've, I've, um, I, I think especially, you know, having having both little Fiona and, and, and Phoebe, and and um, you know, uh, my wonderful wife Kelly, and so I, I, this also also one of the things that I think is is remained even more true during. This wonderful uh, and challenging COVID times, but yeah, well, live, live in the moment. Okay, yeah, for sure. You mentioned that you, you know, you have a wife and you have your two wonderful daughters. The next question really pertains to; it's connected to that. What are you doing to dismantle the patriarchy? <laughs> your face was like. <gasps> Um, I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, Kelly and I are our team mm-hmm. and, and I think, I think every, I think every, um, every household is, is, is different, right? Yeah. Every, 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 every family is different. Every relationship is different. Um, but I, I try to, I try to be the best example, um, to my, to my daughters that I can be, um, you know, uh, Kelly and I are, 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 you know, we, we, as I said, we're a team, we we do a lot, um, we do a lot together wherever we can. And, um, and, you know, I, 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 I don't know if that answers your. your <laughs> you're doing your, your best. Is that what you're trying to tell exactly. me? You're doing your best to to, to, to show your that. daughters, um, you know, non-traditional uh, yeah. roles, gender uh, roles. I, I, absolutely, and, and and you know whether it's like 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 both my daughters are are um, have a great balance of of you know playing outside you know activities and at the same time. Um, you know, playing, you know, with, with maybe some, some dolls or toys in, indoor and, and, and watching different things on TV or, or what have you. And so um, anytime that they might say uh, or, or make certain statements that might be 
like oh yeah that's you know that's for boys or, or, mm. or that's something that only girls do and 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 you know Kelly and I are very quick to 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 clarify that um, yeah. and to and to make sure that they know that they can you know play whatever they want to play and they can be whatever they want to be when they you know when they grow up and they can you know anything you know to to really make sure that they know that um, uh, I guess just to dismantle any of those you know stereotypes so to speak. Nice, I know it was, a, it was like a you know crazy little question there but i was like you know i'm gonna sure, ask sure. this to yeah, everybody but, but especially the men especially yeah. when the men have daughters you know yeah. or or just you know i just want to also let people know that you are not a mediocre white man okay i had conversations earlier today how we're sick of mediocre white men and you are not that color you are not that i i appreciate that and I, <laughs> I, I i i i strive to to, to never be that <laughs> you're a good one cola you're a good one and, and phoebe um and fiona are super fucking fortunate to have you as a as a father so it's a good well, thing last yeah. question uh, of the yes. rapid fires yes. what will be your legacy what will your legacy be another great one um <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would, uh, I would love to be remembered for, um, uh, for, for making, uh, for making people happy, for, for um, uh, helping to have created um, memorable experiences, whether that be, you know, for my, for my own family, right? I mean, whether it's, you know them having great times when, when we go camping or when we, when we, when we just have quality time together to, to, you know, what I do for my, you know, for my day job and, um, you know, at AEG or whether it be for things that I do for, for fun, you know, whether it's, you know, creating, uh, you know, digital content or, or, or Spotify playlist or whatever that might be, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. just, just, um, um, you know, maybe it sounds cheesy but just just making making people uh making people happy and, and and having those uh wonderful memories not cheesy at all not cheesy at all you know um and the power, okay, that was the power a, of music too the power of music right like i always say um music saved my life you know it could yeah. transport you to so many different yeah. places it could take you back and answer to memories it could yeah you know take you out of a funk sometimes uh it's it's really powerful it's a one of the most powerful forms of art i believe because it's universal and everyone has access to it so true. especially yeah. now um okay so wrapping it up i wanted to see what are you doing right now as far as your passion projects um oh wait one second before that what do you think the state of the music industry is right now, live music industry, um, since that's the industry you're in and that's yeah. the industry that most of my clients are in? I mean, we've all had to pivot, um, especially me because I work for myself, but you, you're still in it to win it, luckily, yes. knock on some wood. Yes. Um, but where, where do you, do you feel, when do you think we'll be back? When do you think we'll be able to, to, to go back to live music? Yeah, I wish I, I, I wish I knew. I mean, Clearly, the live entertainment business has is, is, um, just been hit super, super hard, and we continue to be hit. Um, you know, I, 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 do, I do believe, and from everything I'm reading and, and, and hearing, that once we do come back, mm -hmm. we're going to come back strong. Uh, you know, I think that there is that desire that, that fans and, and, and people oh, yeah. have, right, for the live experience. And, um, and so... It just the big question is is when I mean it'll it'll be at some point, you know, next year. But um, you know whether that's <laughs> spring, summer, or fall. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say? Who's to say? It depends on how you know. Got to socially distance and and wear the mask and be smart about things and be smart um, and just you know, open pray. But, you heard um right before I came on with you, I saw that the the video from The Rock because him and his entire family got it. Oh no, I didn't see that. Yeah, he the, just like a the, video, like, "Hey, wow, me, my wife, that. and my two little babies all got COVID." He's like, "I've been through some shit. I've been homeless. I did it, like all this stuff." He's like, "But nothing compares 
to what this has been. He's like, we're on the other side of it. He's like, but I know a lot of people are not fortunate enough to make it to the other side. We all have someone that loved ones that have, you know, oh. people have passed away. Da, 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 da. And I was like, that's the kind of shit we fucking need. Someone that, you know, the one of the strong, the highest grossing actor in the world right yeah. now. Also yeah. one of the strongest men and a man, a quote unquote man's man that, you know, ridiculous dudes look up to that. Maybe that will fucking yeah. give him a well, kick I, I, in the right direction. Hope. Yeah. Uh, and a side note, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson and I share the exact same birthday. Oh, Taurus, Taurus Mans. Well, that's Taurus why he Mans. has a big, he has a big uh, bull <laughs> tattoo. But um, that's why he and I, you know, look a little alike. So. <laughs> yeah, totally. I totally see that shit. Um, but no, I had so no yeah. idea. I'll check that out. Yeah. So yeah, well, yeah, I, just I, everybody do the shit. Yeah, I mean, it's going to come down to the confidence of, you know, what the fans have to how safe everything will be once we all come back right and and um but but they will you know i think a lot of people are yearning for that live experience and for that oh. you know interaction with with other fans and yeah. other people so it's missing i mean i've attended a couple of concerts or performances as you will um online and erica badu is the best to do it so far and and i love that experience but it doesn't uh you know, compare to that live experience that you have at a concert mm -hmm. and you can be by yourself and connect with the entire place and have that energy. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty magical and it's sad that it's not happening because we definitely need it. Um, but we'll see, like you said, Q1, two, three, who's to say, um, uh, yeah. so let's go back to, to, to wrap it up. Let's go back to, what you're doing in your passion projects on the side, let us know. Cause I know you're doing some really awesome shit. Um, sure. So, uh, a couple of, a few years ago, um, my friend junior and I put together uh, a panel discussion at the grand museum, uh, celebrating the history of the LA ska scene. And so we did a couple of those there. And so during COVID, um, we started an Instagram uh, for the history of LA ska. So basically it's digital content and we're also doing a, a monthly Instagram live um, uh, interview series, mm. the junior hosts and I help uh, curate. And so uh, that's at history of LA ska on Instagram. And then nice. Sean and I have also started um, these daily uh, playlists, Spotify playlists that we push out also through um, Instagram as well as um, uh, other sorts of content and, and photos and really things that are uh, that Sean and I really enjoy. It's kind of soulful based uh, and that is Rockery CA on Instagram. So um, a couple of things help keep me sane during the, during the right. uh, uh, you know the, the COVID time. And you're doing what I like to tell um, a supernatural bear that he does when he sends little postcards and notes to people is that you're spreading joy. You're spreading joy. You know, you know you're spreading joy on on online with with music, sharing your expertise and your <laughs> you know what I'm spraying. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um is there anything else you want to you know promote or let us know about what you're doing before we wrap it all up? I just want to uh, I want to make sure to thank you so much for all your the love and support and friendship over the years and, <laughs> and, um, and for asking me to do this. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I wish, I wish we were not so far apart, uh, physically so that we could, we could hang and, and, and a supernatural bear can hang with, uh, you know, my two girls more. Um, I know soon, um, right. Like, Whenever this uh, fucking cool. shit lifts, then we'll, we will, uh, we will do it. And, um, maybe even social distance. Who's to say we'll do, hopefully do that soon. Um, but thank you so much, Kohler. Like you're, you've always been since college, since the fucking nineties, been part of my tribe. <laughs> um, you've, you've been an integral part of my music industry history. You've been a, a nice guiding light to, to show me that you could be in this foul industry, but still be a nice person. <laughs> and, and that's fucking key. And also, I always have your back, especially when I wanted you wanted a picture of Nora Jones 
and I went up and yes. said that you're my brother. That's right. I, I, I had uh, my buddy Brian and I had a big crush on Nora, <laughs> big fans, and it was at Universal Amphitheater, and you helped yeah. make that happen, and I still have that photo, and so does so does Brian. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Shout out to Brian. Um, yeah, so uh, Harry Potter is on top of our old offices right now. It's a shame. Harry Potter that, ride. that place, that place uh, and I do need to give a shout out to uh, to Ingrid, who, oh. if it wasn't for Ingrid and Denise, um, who were the were the two folks that hired me, and, and um, yeah, I mean that's that's where I got my start there at, at the old amphitheater. Best best boss, I say it to this day. I just told Supernatural Bear before he got to meet her finally, like what a couple months ago, that she's like one of my best bosses I've ever had ever. So. Shout out to Ingrid. I'm going to have Ingrid on here. Please fucking believe nice. it. Yes. She's dope. So please she's believe big, it. She's a big hip hopper. Yeah. Would you never think looking at her? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, All hey, right. And then. Also, also big congrats to you on, on your, your podcast uh, world. I was, I was, um, I was playing some for, uh, for Kelly recently and she said how amazing you sound and you have the perfect voice uh, oh. for, uh, for, for the podcast world too. Oh, so. thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I'm going to have her on. Like I said, like, it's great. You guys are a power couple. I love you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys. Well, like it's much, much love to you and uh, all the best with this wonderful new one. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Grow nutrient dense microgreens in your home in as little as seven to 10 days. Microgreens are vegetable greens harvested in the early stages of stem and leaf. These sustainable seed and sow microgreen do-yourself kits are a great way to learn how easy it is to grow your own food. Follow at seed underscore and underscore sow, S-O-W underscore microgreens on Instagram or order your kit via their Etsy store. Go to Etsy.com and look for seed sow microgreens. Get yours today. And now, introducing the Supernatural Bear Corner. Supernatural Bear. Bam. Sim Sima, who got the keys to my Vima? Who am I? Them girls, them sugar? How great was Kohler, man? Um, he's great. Good peeps. Glad he's part of the fam, part of the tribe. Also, what about the seed in so microgreen spot? I want to let you guys know that we ordered a package. The packaging was super cute. Supernatural Bear and I set it up. It was The instructions are there. Hella easy. And in, I think it was like seven days, they were full blown grown, ready to harvest. We made a delicious salad. We added some sliced strawberries, I call them stroops, some um, avocado, some thinly sliced apples, and then we made um, a homemade balsamic vinaigrette. Superb. Shabuya. But thanks for listening. And, uh, be sure to stay tuned for the next episodes, which will be our first relatives special episode. That's that ongoing situation that you'll find out more about in the next episode. Also, as always, peace and love out goes out to Liberty and the fam who are either on their way to New Zealand, quarantine in New Zealand, or roaming free, unlike us, out in New Zealand. Bye. Word to Your Mama is produced and owned by Ritzy Periwinkle. Intro beat and most of the beats for the spots produced by Nico Beats. And Word to Your Mama is brought to you by RitzyPeriwinkle.com, DoyanSharp.com, and Panoply.com.